What's up guys, it's Dr. Webb here, orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. This video, I'm going to be talking about how I prepare for surgeries as an attending. I have other videos about how I prepare for surgeries as a resident and for medical students out there, and I'll put that right up here. But this video, I'm going to be speaking about essentially my last year in practice. I finished my training in 2020, and I've been in private practice here in San Antonio, Texas ever since, and this is how I prepare for surgeries. Thank you to the sponsors of this video over at CanHub. CanHub is an interactive online anatomy and histology platform used by millions of healthcare students and professionals worldwide. I can be the first to tell you that learning anatomy is very challenging. It was actually one of the most difficult classes in our first year of medical school, but it's also one of the most important. No matter what specialty that you go into, you will need to know your anatomy. As a surgeon, it's even more important because it's something that you will deal with day in and day out. KenHub has a plethora of content ranging from articles, practice quizzes, question banks, and over 100 hours of video material and thousands of high resolution images that you can use to learn anatomy. Specifically for spine surgery, they have tons of videos that I can use to review and refresh up on my anatomy before a big surgery or a big case. So no matter what stage of medicine you are in and whether this is medical school, nursing school, dental school, your scrub tech or CRNA, or even a surgeon who's been in practice for 20 years, CanHub is for you. Check them out today. There's a link in the description for 10% off of your sign up. So I remember as a medical student about to start my surgery rotation and just feeling really overwhelmed. Like how do I study for these surgeries? How do I prepare? How do I excel? What if they ask me a question I don't know? And I hear all these stories about surgeons and how abrasive that they can be, how you know hard of a rotation surgery is. And the truth is, it can be very challenging. Uh, surgery rotation as a medical student or a PA, uh, nurse practitioner student, if you do surgery rotations, you know, uh, these can be really challenging and intimidating kind of rotations, but it shouldn't have to be. If anybody knows me, they probably will tell you that I'm one of the coolest surgeons that you will ever meet. And it takes a lot for me to get upset. You know, I, in my surgery rotations in residency and medical school, I've been yelled at, I've been cursed out, um, I've seen surgeons throw things across the room. All that is really uncalled for. But being out in practice for the last year um, and doing surgeries on my own, well, how do I prepare for those surgeries? Um, a lot of patients that come to my office, they come with really complex medical conditions. They have bleeding disorders, cardiovascular disease, they are, they're on blood thinners, previous heart attacks, renal disease. Um, patients who have a history of cancer, radiation, so you have to take all of those things into account. And there's not one patient that is exactly the same as another. And even though most of the surgeries that I do in spine surgery are pretty routine, like ACDFs, which means anterior cervical discectomy infusion, or a microdiscectomy, a patient who has a disc herniation, patients who have degenerative slips, so what's called a spondylolisthesis, uh, most of these surgeries uh, that I do, including laminectomies for patients who have lumbar stenosis, are pretty routine, but the anatomy could be a little bit different, and everybody's anatomy is, for the most part, the same, but there are some nuances, some things that you do have to know and kind of take into account when performing surgery. For any surgery that I have prepared for, either as a medical student, resident, fellow, and even now in practice, I think there are a couple of different things that you need to at least know ahead of time. You need to know what type of surgery is being performed, why the surgery is being performed, what type of approach, which means what part of the body they're going to make the incision, and what happens when things go wrong. 
So if you are preparing for a, a, a surgery as a medical student or a resident, you should know those things at minimum. Let's give an example. A patient is being scheduled for a C4, C5, ACDF, anterior cervical discectomy infusion. One of my favorite surgeries to do. Well, that answers what type of surgery is being performed. So if you don't know what an ACDF is, you should go home and look it up. Uh, maybe Google, Google search, maybe some anatomy books to uh, surgical books. But uh, for the most part, everyone has internet and can quickly uh, just Google ACDF and see exactly what it is. I use YouTube a lot for a lot of educational or instructional videos to just get a grasp or a general overview of a particular surgery or topic. And there are a lot of other websites out there that you can use to figure out what that surgery is. The next thing that you need to know before undergoing any type of surgery or rotation or if you're being stuck into a room as a medical student is to know why they're doing that particular surgery. And this can answer a lot of the questions that you may get pimped on uh, during your surgery rotation. The surgeon may ask you, hey, why, what is this structure here? Why are we doing it this way? Um, what's the blood supply to that structure there? So that kind of ties into the third um, topic in the, or the question that, that needs to be answered is how and what approach will be taken. So if you figure out for an ACDF, a patient is undergoing this procedure for debilitating neck and arm pain from a pinched nerve, well, this procedure is going to take the pressure off of that nerve and the spinal cord and then fuse that area of the spine so that it longer, no longer moves. Well, the next question that you need to ask yourself and make sure you understand before any surgery is what approach and the relevant anatomy. So what approach for anterior cervical discectomy infusion? Well, this is pretty straightforward. We're going through the anterior portion of the neck. The next thing that you need to ask yourself is what is the relevant anatomy in that area? So once the incision is made along the anterior portion of the neck, um, you can feel the sternal cladoid mastoid muscle, and that's one of the landmarks that you, you need to know for the, making this incision. Um, you're gonna go through the platysma, and then you're gonna find the plane that is between the trachea and exophagus and the sternal cladoid mastoid muscle. And then you need to know also any other important structures that are in that way. So whenever I'm studying for a particular surgery, especially now as an attending when everything falls on me, I need to know what's in that general vicinity, things that may get injured, like the recurrent laryngeal nerve, the trachea is there, the esophagus is there, you have your longus coli muscles, which is the sympathetic chain is really nearby that. So when you're studying, preparing for surgeries, this is what I do, I ask myself, what is in this general vicinity? One of the ways that you can prepare uh, for this is websites. There's lots of really good websites out there that will walk you through a particular surgery or walk you through the relevant anatomy. One of the websites that I've used for a long time is the University of Wisconsin. They have anatomy videos that the professor is actually walking you through a particular portion of the neck or of the upper chest, thorax region, and I usually just watch those videos as a refresher. Other videos that you can use, including YouTube, just doing a Google search of ACDF, surgical technique, and these will give you kind of the basics of what you need to know when going into these surgeries. So depending on your, your, your skill level as well as your educational level will dictate how much of this that you need to know. And as a surgeon, I need to know all of it. I need to know why that particular surgery has been performed, what type of surgery is going to be performed, how I'm going to do the surgery, and then what happens if something goes wrong. For the anatomy portion, I'm a very visual person. So I look at various pictures and textbooks I also look at uh, videos online of uh, other instructors talking about or professors, surgeons talking about that particular procedure, or I use 3D models. So this is a, one of the models that I have here in my office. And even before surgery that I did last week, I will take out this model here and I will actually just sit there and I will stare at it to get a, 
basically a 3D kind of view of that model of the spine in my head. So tomorrow I have a surgery in the lumbar spine. I know what levels that I'm going to do this surgery at. So I will actually sit and just look at this model here. Okay, my screw is going to go in this bone here, this bone here, the pedicle, the pedicle. And I'm going to do what's called a laminectomy, which means remove the lamina from this portion of the spine. So in surgery tomorrow, I, I have a general idea how much dissection that I need to do and also which vertebrae need to be exposed during that surgery. Other things that I use, certain textbooks, I've had, I have other videos about this as well, spine surgery textbooks, and I use these to just uh, review and refresh. And then anatomy books. Um, I have a number of different uh, uh, anatomy books, but these anatomy books can really just break down the relevant anatomy and local anatomy that I think is important in that particular region of the body that you'll be performing surgery at. So KenHub is a really good platform that you can use to prepare for surgeries. Even as a surgeon, I still refresh my surgical notes. Um, I look back over, over them. One of the biggest advice that I received as a resident, as an intern, was from one of my chief residents. And she told me, every surgery that you do, go home and take notes about what you learned during that surgery. So that's exactly what I did. For the last six or seven years, I've updated the same document about things that I learned during that surgery. And before the next surgery, I just review those notes again. So as an attending, most of the surgeries that I do are routine. So most of the things that I do to prepare for these surgeries are essentially refreshing my old notes, reviewing some anatomy and making sure I'm, a, I'm aware of what the uh, relevant anatomy is in that area and also some of the surgical technique, going through the steps of the surgery in my head. But depending on your educational level, whether you're a medical stu uh, student, resident, fellow, will dictate how uh, essentially that you prepare and how thorough you are in preparing for these surgeries. So I hope this video helps you guys. Definitely check out KenHub. They have a really good platform in terms of um, preparing and also understanding the anatomy. Uh, one of my professors, uh, who's a hand surgeon in my residency program, he basically stated that the anatomy hasn't changed in the last 50 years. Uh, but it did, there are some nuances between and slight variations between patient to patient, but for the most part, uh, the anatomy has not changed, it will not change. You just need to really understand it. You really, you really need to uh, know it. So KenHub allows you to really do that from their videos, their quizzes, uh, the different tutorials. Um, it really prepares you uh, to really understand anatomy. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you next time.